Hey everyone, today's video is about when someone blackmails him into revealing his crush. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Let's get going. Coming right in key. His crush on you really wasn't much of a secret. Though, no matter how painfully obvious it was, you really brushed it off as him being his usual flirt yourself. He was a massive flirt, after all. So you never thought he was being serious. Much to the rest of the class's annoyance. So naturally, a few of the classmates couldn't take it anymore and decided to take action. But instead of helping their poor desperate friend, they decided to use his crush against him. And by day, I mean Minata and Zero. At first, Kaminari thought they were just kidding around, but only not doubting his crush on you as long as he did whatever they wanted. I mean, his friends wouldn't actually... Hey, Wyan, you never guess who has the hots for. Okay, maybe do it. And so he gives in to their requests. For the next week, he did anything for them, doing their dirty work for them, pulling pranks for Sarah and trying to sneak into the bathroom to take pictures from the girls from Mineta. Though he was caught a lot and punished for all his actions every time. It really sucked. They even put him in a maid outfit at one point and he still shivers at the memories. He was truly suffering. After a week, he felt like his fear was gone. He didn't care if he found out. He really couldn't take it anymore. He didn't want to clean the bedrooms. They had some really sketchy stuff hidden away in there. He couldn't deal with more shocks from Jiro for being a pervert or to be tied up by Mr. Aizawa's scarf. It really hurt. So, he confessed to you right in front of them. He went up to you, so timidly you barely even recognized him. Rather than being this bull, of energy he usually was. He slumped over, and his eyes looked tired. Why on? He cried out, as he ran into your arms. Sarah and Minata have been bullying me all week. They keep making me do all the stuff I don't want to do, because I have a crush on you. And they knew about it. But I didn't want you to find out, but I also don't want Mr. Aizawa to punish me anymore. Please save me. You stood stunned at his words, but he seemed so sad that you couldn't help but pat the back of his head as he buried his face into your shirt. Is that so? He sent the two behind them, a glare, and they gulped. Their plans were foiled. Well, how about we show those two jerks and go on a date? We can do whatever you want, and you'll never have to listen to them again. He perked up to them so fast. Wait, really? Why, Anne, you're the best person in the world. And so, you two went off on a date. He dragged you right out of the dorms, then and there, to take you out to go to dinner. Midori Zuku. Who would ever want to blackmail this precious boy? With a puppy crush. It was so sweet and innocent. You'd have to be a real jerk to use that against him. It's too bad Mina did love some drama every now and then. She had seen how he looked at you, so it was easy to catch on. How love filled his eyes were, as he admired everything you did. It was almost always accompanied by him leaning onto his hand and sighing dreamily. It was safe to say he had it bad. And as much as Mina wanted you two to get together, she also saw this as an opportunity to use this to her advantage. Hey, Midaria, can you help me with the homework? And by help me, I mean let me copy your answers. She smiled instantly at Tom. Oh, sorry, I'm kind of busy right now. Hmm, is that so? After I've been keeping your crush on Wyatt a secret? He froze. 
Well, if you're not going to return the favor, you owe me. I guess I'll tell them after all. Mina turned to you as you passed through the living space. It was almost too perfectly timed. Hey, Wyand, guess what? No. That's how it all started. Mina would keep you secret, but for a price. Poor Midoriya wasn't ready for you to know about his feelings for you yet. And he had become a victim to Mina's wrath. For almost a whole week, he was cleaning for her, helping her with homework, even doing things like walking all the way down from his room to the living space so he could only hand her the remote that was about an arm length away from her. It was bothersome, yes, but he would do anything to keep you from finding out that he was possibly in love with you. He was sure it was becoming more than just a crush, but he didn't want to compromise your friendship. Who knows how you would react? He didn't want to lose you. So he had happily settled for watching you from a distance, observing your cute smiles and habits. Like how your eyes twinkled when you were eating your favorite food. Or how you crinkled your nose whenever you were stuck on homework. He thought he had been very good at keeping it a secret. So finding out that Mina had caught on to that was so embarrassing. After a week of catering on her, every need was starting to affect the poor boy. If he was in the middle of training and she wanted him to go to the store for her, then he had no choice in order to keep his secret safe. It was affecting his training, his studying, and his overall mood. He knew Mina probably never went to hurt him. She had kept his secret so far and he was thankful for that. But when her requests interrupted his studying once again, he marched downstairs to tell her he didn't want to do this anymore. Oh, come on, Midoriya. I just wanted to grab me a soda from the store. I'm busy working. I don't have time to do all of these things for you. He said, in a quiet yet stern tone. He may be known as a bit of pushover. At times, but if something was affecting his chances of becoming a hero, then that was a different story. Just do this one last thing for me, and I promise I won't tell why and you like them. Huh? They both froze. Neither of them dared to turn around. As they recognized the voice. When they saw you, Midori stumbled and had to grab onto the countertop to keep himself from fainting. He was completely horrified. Mina let out a small, awkward laugh. Uh, you know what? Never mind. I'll go to the store myself. And with that, she left the two of you alone. The sense was numbingly painful for Midoriya. He just stood, hunched over the counter, trying to stop his eyes from swirling. Are you okay? He heard your soft voice ask and a hand placed on his shoulders. He almost ran away, but seeing the worry in your eyes made him stay still. Not really. He shakily replied. He heard you laugh, but couldn't figure out what's so funny. Well, I think you might feel better when I tell you that I like you too. It didn't help. He was so embarrassed and happy all at the same time that his legs gave out from under him. He sat on the cold the kitchen floor in a flustered daze. He sat with him as he muttered to himself about that this was possible. Someone like you, liking him back. That's impossible, right? You're perfect. How can he be the one lucky enough? To have your heart. Once he came around, he was still too dazed to stand up. And so you two ended up having a small picnic on the kitchen floor. As you planned for the first date of many. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you liked the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Goodbye.